Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review Fuzz, When Nature Breaks the Law by Mary Roach. This book was published in 2021 by W.W. Norton. The hardcover comes in at 320 pages. However, I read an e-copy of this book that I accessed for free for reviewing purposes through Edelweiss. This is science writer Mary Roach's eighth book. She has previously released one essay collection as well as six New York Times bestsellers, so it's very likely you've at least heard of one of those. The book that she is probably the most well known for is her first book, Stiff, which came out in the early 2000s. And it's all about what happens to human bodies when they become cadavers, when they're donated to science. But she's written about a number of different topics. She wrote about human sexuality for her book, Bonk. She talked about what happens to the human body when it goes into space in her book, Packing for Mars. And then most recently in 2016, she released a book called Grunt, which is all about different aspects aspects of being in the military. But in this new book, Fuzz, Mary Roach takes on a very different, yet still extremely complicated topic, and that is human wildlife conflict. Or to put it in other words, what problems arise when humans and all different types of creatures, meaning plants or animals, try to coexist in the same spaces. But even though this is a different kind of subject matter for Mary Roach, she still structures this book like a Mary Roach book. So each different chapter looks at a different issue that somehow falls underneath the umbrella of the larger topic that she seeks to discuss in the book. And she says in her introduction that she starts off the early chapters by discussing the more serious, the more heinous infractions by human standards anyway. And then she moves along to discuss the things that are less serious, but that are more widespread issues. So in the opening chapter, which I personally personally think is the best chapter of the book, she's looking at what is probably the most serious crime of all, and that's murder. And she's taking this training course along with different officers. It's held by a wildlife agency, and it's basically teaching these officers to identify whether or not an attack on a human has been committed by an animal. And if so, what kind of animal was it and how did it happen? There's a lot of use of forensics. The whole thing is very CSI. But she also discusses a number of other things within this book as well. Things like out of control monkey populations, harassing people in urban areas and how nothing has been really helping the problem. She talks about birds getting caught up in plane engines and how it's good for just about no one. And it's a very pervasive problem that people are trying to figure out ways to deal with. She talks about dead trees falling over because they're dead, but they cause damage when they do that. She even has a whole discussion at the end of the book where she talks about whether or not there is a humane way of dealing with pests. And if so, what is that humane way? And when we say pests, we mean a lot of different things, but you could mean crop eating birds, or you could even mean invasive species. To get a hold of all of this information that she's sharing with us in this book, Mary Roach did research for two years. She traveled all over the world. She met with a ton of different people. She did interviews and also in a lot of cases, as evidenced by the wildlife CSI training program that she did, she got involved herself. So instead of having a detached narrator, Mary Roach is very involved in the storytelling of this book. And that is very much in line with her style. But because she is so present on the page in this book and in all of the other books of hers that I've read, a lot of the entertainment factor of her books is based on the strength of her personality and the way that she channels that through her writing. She is extremely funny, but it's a very dry humor. She's very sarcastic. She enjoys a good play on words. And she also really likes to build off of her jokes that happened earlier. So sometimes reading her books is like watching an episode of the TV show Arrested Development, where if you want to get a joke that happens at the end of a chapter, you better have been paying attention to some details that happened at the beginning of that chapter. You can also tell within this book specifically that she really understands at this point in her career the flow of a chapter and when to roll out specific information to help the audience absorb it in the best possible way. 
So you'll notice within these chapters, at the end of a chapter, she'll start to lead you into the next subject. She'll start to introduce the next subject at the end of the previous chapter. So they don't feel choppy. So they all feel connected. And also she'll choose how to roll out information within a specific chapter. So you don't get overwhelmed with information all at once. It's slowly introduced so you can understand one thing before moving on to the next. That's a very smart way to present things. So just for example, in the final chapter, when she's talking about gene modification for pest control purposes, at the beginning of that chapter, she's talking about the scientists that are pursuing it and what it could potentially achieve. And after she does that, you start thinking, yeah, that could be the answer. That's great. I'm glad they're doing it. But then very slowly, she starts to bring up the arguments against it. She talks about the problems that people are currently facing with it, potential problems, ripple effects. And by the end of the chapter, you start to understand all the different sides and you fully realize what a complicated jumbled mess the whole thing is. It takes a lot of skill to do that. It takes a lot of experience to do that, when to give information, when to show restraints, how to introduce dramatic irony. Mary Roach does all of that all throughout this book. And she's very masterful in what she does in that way. This book is really interesting overall. And the things that Mary Roach normally gets right, the strengths that she has as an author are on full display throughout this book. But unfortunately, so are the downsides to her work. And the first thing I'll mention is that her humor does occasionally go too far. I mean, the book is really, really funny, especially if you have her type of humor, which is that dry, sarcastic humor, which I also have. So I was howling with laughter at so many points throughout this book. I mean, the chapter on seagulls, especially since I just very recently reviewed two books on seabirds, it hit me especially hard. I was laughing so violently that I thought I was going to cough up a piece of lung. And then not very long afterward, she said something that I thought went too far. I'm not going to be saying what that was here or in the comments because I think it's insensitive and I don't care to repeat it. That's just how I feel about that. But I'll say that reading a Mary Roach book can occasionally feel like you're spending time with a really naturally funny friend. I think we've all known someone like that. But then they get us laughing because they are so funny just by existing. And they start to relish that attention. They start then trying to make us laugh. And because their eye is on that next laugh over everything else, it's very easy for them to sometimes go too far. And on at least one occasion in this book, I felt like that happened. Also, I'll take a moment to note, just in case it's something you're sensitive to, that Mary Roach does quite a bit of swearing in this book. And she's also not afraid to work blue. I am married to a man from New Jersey, so very little offends me in that regard, but I know not everyone likes swearing or dirty jokes, so I thought it was something I should bring to your attention. But the biggest drawback to this book, in my eyes, is the thing that I continue to stub my toe on when it comes to Mary Roach books, and that's the fact that I feel like she doesn't go far enough in the right direction. I never feel at the end of a Mary Roach book that I know exactly what she wanted me to understand by the end of the book. I don't think she ever brings together all of the disparate topics in order to communicate a singular clear message to the reader. And if you're not taking a stance at the end of the book, then why did you tell us all of that in the first place? It's not that I don't understand her intention in writing them, because I do. I just disagree with it. I know that they're meant to be casual, humorous introductions to topics that people can use as a sampler platter and then go on to research more if they like. That would be great if I thought a lot of people were doing that. But I think far more frequently, Mary Roach books are people's one and only introduction to these topics. And I don't think a lot of further research happens. People are busy. They've already read about something. So why go pick up something else? I think that happens a lot. So I think in her books, there's an inherent risk that the takeaway from them is going to be an overly simplified look at a larger issue. Thankfully, at the end of this book, she does at least hint at a stance, which is a step in the right direction. And she did seem to believe it when she genuinely expressed that she would like humans and wildlife to coexist peacefully. 
And it's a beautiful sentiment. But I think she's a whole lot less in the middle of two warring parties than she would like us to believe, based on what she chooses to focus on in the earlier chapters. When you look at Mary Roach's bibliography, you will notice that she writes about the human world, human life, human culture. And there is nothing wrong with that. Those are all perfectly respectable topics to write about. I point it out only because I think it reveals a decidedly human focus that is also present in this book. And that becomes a little bit touchy because this is a book about the natural world, but Mary Roach is not a nature writer. And so the world that she presents in this book is very human centric. And of course, you could argue that she's human, just like the rest of us. So of course, she's going to be biased in favor of her own species. But there are some people in this book who aren't biased in favor of their own species. They're in the minority, that is for sure, because the solution to so many of these problems is the extermination of living creatures. That is what the majority of people want to do in the face of these problems. But there are some people who don't think that should be done. And they're very vocal about the fact that it's not up to them to determine whether or not a human life is more valuable than the life of another creature. The people who Mary Roach chooses to talk to throughout this book are looking at these conflicts largely because they're affecting humans or humans have caused a problem directly or indirectly, intentionally or unintentionally, and then science is trying to course correct, basically. It all just has a very distinct human focus. Very infrequently are we talking about things that humans could do differently for an animal's benefit. It's more like we're trying to solve this problem, and if the animal benefits, that's great, it's a bonus, but that's very infrequently the objective. It's much more like, hmm, these animals are causing us a problem. How do we fix it so that they stop bothering us? And Mary Roach does bring this next thing up in her book a few times, but I don't think she underlines it nearly strongly enough. But these issues are arising or they're getting worse because there are more humans every single second. And we're expanding into areas that have been traditionally theirs. We expand into their territory and then we act surprised when those creatures have the audacity to continue existing. Climate change is also playing a significant role in changes in wildlife behavior, which means that these problems and more are only going to become more frequent and more severe over time, which is something that I don't think she touches upon nearly enough in the book. Basically, I don't feel that wildlife got enough of a voice in this book. I read a lot of nature books, so of course my background is coming into that opinion. I do think that she adequately showed that these issues are very complicated, that there are so many factors to consider, and I also know that she as a human is never going to be able to write a book that gives an animal's perspective in an authentic way. That's just impossible for anyone to do. But I do think she had a number of opportunities throughout this book to draw attention to the fact that humans are doing a tremendous amount of damage to this earth and its creatures, and she did not take those opportunities. But those are my thoughts on that. No need to harp on it any longer, especially because I don't wanna give you the impression that I hated this book. I didn't hate it. I didn't even dislike it. I actually really liked it. I thought it was very entertaining, well-researched, well-presented, and it's probably now my second favorite Mary Roach book just after Stiff. Stiff is still my number one favorite, but I really, really liked this one. I just thought it was important to mention that I saw some drawbacks as well. If you have read this book or if you would like to read this book, especially if my review video has convinced you to give it a try, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you have read it and you want to use it as that jumping off point to learn more, I urge you to check out the further reading section of my description box below where I've listed some titles that you might want to check out if any or all of these chapters piqued your interest. And at the bottom of that description box, you will find links to everywhere you can find me across the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.